Hey guys, it's the Costume Jeweler. Today, on my way to thrift stores, I am going to take you through a historic village that has old homes from the 1800s and a general store, old schools, and things like that. So I will videotape some of that for you today. This old home is the homestead of Captain James P. and Elizabeth Campbell McMullen. It's a, the oldest log cabin, and it was built in 1852. going to take you walking around the front of this cabin built in 1852 love old cabins. It's just a little village of old homes, general store, cabins, a school, and things like that that are being preserved. Here's a cool old homestead. In the fall here, they usually have reenactments and things like that. Not so much right now with the pandemic going on. So these houses you could usually go into, but not right now. This one's interesting because the front porch roof is painted a light blue. And what I've been told in the past that the reason that is done today is because wasp and insects will not build nests if it, the color is light blue because the wasps think it's the sky. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's interesting. So they painted this a light blue. I anticipate for that reason. Here's a great old car. I don't know what kind of, or not car, but a truck. I don't know what kind it is, but it's a neat display that they've got set up here at least remnants of the old truck which are pretty awesome
This house is called the Low House. Here's a little bit of history of it. And what you can hopefully read in the short time I'm filming it. This house was built in 1906. Now we're coming up on an old fire engine house. Or maybe not so much, but they are storing a fire truck inside to preserve it. Again, I love this place because they are preserving all these old homes and remnants of the past, such as this fire engine inside and we're going to try to get a good video of that I'll tell you i think the 1800s probably would have been one of my favorite times even though it's been very hard so here's some of the front of the fire truck if you can see it in the reflection of the front door window so i'm doing my best to get a good view for you guys Here's some more of it, looking in the window, best you can see without reflection. Some more of the seating area of the old fire truck. And then here's the rear of the fire truck, looking through the window of this building pretty cool old piece lots of beautiful tall pine trees here here are some old horse stables so you know you guys we just left the low house and it's behind this barn and this barn also belonged to the Lowe family. And here's a little bit of history to it. It was built in 1911. So again, I'm not going to videotape too much of the discussion here about the barn, but maybe you can pause the video when you're watching it to be able to read some about it and see some of the old photos. Walking up on another old homestead that has a huge garden behind it. Here's the side of this old home. Probably typical siding for that time period. And you've got your outhouse behind the house, of course. Here's a little bit of history about outhouses. This one was built in 1930. And here's the small garden behind this home not many things planted yet looks like the monarch butterflies are out and about there's probably some dill planted here and i believe some butterflies like a dill and of course other plants looks like there's some arugula swiss chard squash and cabbage and then over here you have some green beans and kale so this little garden has a little bit of everything again this is just a historical area but they do probably go grow the garden and there's carrots 
grow the garden in order to have something out here for show, but also maybe some of the employees take it home with them. And here's a windmill and a water tank for water storage for this old home. And here's some views of the back side of this old home. Of course, it has a new roof on it. The siding and things are either original or have been remodeled and repaired to represent the original siding. Again, before the pandemic, you're allowed to walk into these homes and look through them, which is a bummer. But in the future, I'm sure that they will start allowing that again. But it's roped off where I can't take you up and show you inside the door. Can't really see anything inside that window either. Looks like that might be the kitchen. I like the old rocking chairs, but they're not old. They're courtesy of Cracker Barrel. So this home is called the Moore House, and it was built in 1879. The family that lived here, husband and wife, had five children, and they raised a farm and vegetables. Here's a little bit of history on it. Again, you may have to stop your video if you're interested in reading about it so that you can read some of it. This is the Union Academy School. And again, we can't go inside, so we won't get to see all that great stuff that I've seen before. But here's a little history on it. It was built in 1916. A hand-me-down school. I think it was probably built as a World War I barracks portable classroom. Now, guys, we're going to walk over to the smokehouse. Because it's about lunchtime. Wish we could see in it, but here's a little history on it. This was originally built in 1898. Here's the inside of the smokehouse. Let's see if we can lighten it up a little bit where you can see. I love this. Here's an old tractor. I don't know the history on it. Old wagon. Other remnants of the past. Walking up on the old schoolhouse now. I'm going to try to get some shots for you guys through the windows so that you can see in. I've been in this place before and it is set up like an old 1800s schoolhouse.
so you can see in pretty good through the window. This one unfortunately is no longer set up like an old school house inside. Have your old school bell out front. And this was the Harris School built in 1912. Here's a little bit about it. Started by William Harris and his wife. Now we're walking through the woods to Grandma's house we go. I think this might be Grandma's house right over here. Mustard colored painted home. Let's see if we can find out the year on this house of when it was built. Fancy new roof. Great front porch, which most homes always had great front porches. This is the Green Wood House, built in 1888. Now we have the enormous Williams Park Bandstand. I think this place actually will use this for weddings and other events if people are interested. This was built in 1894. There's a little history on it. A photo of some people back in the day in 1894 enjoying the bandstand. Here's a photo of John Williams. Now I'm going to take you over to the Gulf of Mexico Sponge Company building. I've been in this building before too and it has a lot of exhibits and tells you a history of collecting sponges for use for various purposes. So I'm going to try to get a good video of the front of the building here's a shot of the bandstand great architectural detail on this I can only imagine there was a lot of music and dancing and food and gatherings here. So this is the sponge warehouse. 
is built in 1930. There was a wholesale sponge business here. See the guys in here processing the sponges that they got from the ocean. old church the old glass windows are the wavy glass which is something of the 1800s here's some history of the church it was built in 1905 From the church I'm walking over to a small cottage talk about a tiny home which are very popular today but I think I would rather have this one than any other new tiny home it's got a porch on the front let's see what the back looks like Great little, little itty bitty porch on the back. Old wood shingles. Looks like there's only one window in the front. And of course your rocking chair courtesy of Cracker Barrel. I love this little cottage. So this cottage is called the Boyer Cottage. It's built in 1878. Here's some more history on it, but you will probably have to pause your video in order to try to read it. Again, the old style tiny home for sure. Two very old homes here. We'll find out the history on those in just a minute. This one's an off-white with green trim. Great front porch on it. Wood shingles. Love this old door. You know, a lot of people make, if you find one of these old doors like this at a antique shop, you can make a great coffee table out of it and just use four different sets of legs that are all different sizes for the coffee table. It makes a great conversation piece. This is a great old house. So this is the Plant Sumner House built in 1896. Built by railroad magnate Henry Plant.
Here's the back side of this home, built in 1896. And of course you have the church in walking distance next door. This next home is a real beauty. Wrap around front porch. Not necessarily a front porch if it wraps around, I guess. Old brick fireplace. I want to take you guys walking around this home. It's the biggest one here that is preserved. We'll learn a little bit of history about it in just a few seconds in the front. Details on the handrails, it's great. And the ceiling of this one is painted light blue. Again, what I've been told in the past, and correct me if I'm wrong or if you guys have heard something different, but the reason a porch is painted light blue is in order to keep wasps from building nests because they think that that light blue color is the sky. This is a massive house. Huge fireplace. The old glass windows. I don't know if any of you guys have been to this park before, but if you have, comment below on what you think about it and the preservation of these old homes. This front porch is great too. I don't know if they used to call these widow walks or what they did, but it looks like it's just a window up there. So maybe they just opened up the window and I guess crawled through it or maybe there was once a door, but I don't know about that because it looks like that window was probably came with the house. It doesn't look like there's any indication that there previously was a door there. You can see from me standing back just the massive size of this home. We're about to check it out. The history of it to see if a big family lived here. I can only imagine. So this house was built in 1907. It's called the House of Seven Gables. It originally was located somewhere else but then was floated to its current place in order to preserve it. This home has 13 rooms and over six families have lived here during the time it was built in 1907. The home of Seven Gables.
Now we're headed over to the general store. It's an old green and red wagon. If you need to get your old car repaired, Village Garage is the place to go. You know, have the old tire rims and gas pumps. Vintage advertising signs. Oh yeah, and they also have groceries. You can probably still get it on credit here. So this home we're coming up on now is a 1930s bungalow. It's been here for a couple of years, uh, donated by family. We're going to read about some of the history here, but I think it's still being renovated inside before they will open it up for tours. I think it's pretty awesome that people donate their old homes in order to preserve history. It's even greater that Heritage Village takes these homes in. Heritage Village runs strictly off donations, I believe. I'm not sure if they get any help from the state. But again, don't hold me to that. But I know that they do take donations, but I'm not sure if they get any state funding. So this house was given to the county by a lady in memory of her father. It looks like that she also may have donated artifacts that will eventually go into the home. So here's some pictures of the inside and the renovations that are needed. Looks like there's some great cast iron sinks and tubs. I actually have one of these cast iron sinks myself that I plan on putting in a old home where I grew up that I'm going to have remodeled. So this home was built in 1915. So next to the 1915 bungalow is this beautiful gray and maroon painted home. We'll get some history on it in just a minute. Next to it is the McMullen house and I've been in that one. We'll get some history on it in just a minute also. So this here is the Walsingham house. It was built in 1915. Jesse Walsingham lived here and he married a member of the McMullen family. And of course their house is right here. Don't think these are the original place for the house. Again, this is a historic district that preserves these homes. Here's a little history on it. Here's the McMullen house next door to the Walsingham house. I'm assuming that in the past that these two houses probably sat next to each other. Another big wraparound porch. Christ. So this is the McMullen house and it was built in 1868. Here's a picture of the family on the front porch in 1900. Now 
again, some more pictures or video of the McMullen house. One story, a couple of fireplaces. The old general store next to the McMullen house. Here's the side of it. I'll show you the front and then we'll see if we can't see some things in the windows. So here you are, the general store, H.C. Smith, groceries and meat, quality service on your Model T Ford. Looks like they are hiring six cents an hour. here this is the barber shop Carl's barber shop best place to get a haircut Carl's barber shop also served as a post office in the day so you had the post office behind you you could get a haircut at the same time see all the tools the barber tools and the barber chair. Here's the entryway. At the general store, you can get potatoes and grits and pork chops, stew meat, large prunes. You can also pick up a tea set. And here's some other items in the general store, if you can see a little bit in here. Some more video looking through the store from a window. You see the barber chair. This is the post office area also. So I know that video was a little bit of a deviation from my normal videos about jewelry and thrifting, but as I'm headed to the thrift stores, if I pass something that is historical, I may stop and videotape it and share it with you guys. On to Ybor City.